What's your best what are the odds moment? Many years ago, when I was serving in the Air Force we used to regularly pull pranks on each other. One of the most common ones involved using charge capacitors. You would either slip them into someone's pocket or simply throw them at someone and shout catch. When they caught it, they would get zapped and much hilarity would ensue. I finished my shift in the bay and left to go and see my then girlfriend in Nottingham. I used to catch the train as it was easier than driving and trying to find a parking spot. As usual the train was crowded and I was standing alongside a group of other commuters when the guy beside me suddenly screamed and collapsed. Unbeknown to me one of my colleagues had slipped a charge capacitor into my coat pocket in the changing room at work and unwittingly foiled a would-be pickpocket who got the shock of his life when he tried to lift my wallet. Growing up I had a friend who was adopted, and her family had adopted a boy from another family as well. This boy was half black and half Greek. I knew them all through my teen years. In my early 20s I met up with my sister, and one of her new friends. The girl had just moved here from across the country, and was staying with her grandmother, while her mother worked in China for a year. Over dinner we were talking, and somehow the conversation came up. That she had an older brother that was given up for adoption in our province before she was born. I'm staring at her face and thinking how much she looks like my friend's brother. I ask her if she knew anything about him and she said she knew he was half black and half Greek. I didn't know what to do so I thought about it for a while and called my friend. At her urging I mentioned it to my sister's friend. Fast forward 24 hours, we find out they are siblings and mom flies in from China to meet the child she gave up 20 plus years before. TL, doctor, knew an adopted guy and met his birth sister randomly and reunited them. In 5th grade we used to do a lot of partner projects and the teacher would usually let us pick partners. My best friend and I were in the same class and would always partner up together to do everything and we made sure that we did the projects in the most ridiculous way possible. One day, my teacher decided she had enough of us working together, so she assigned everyone a number, wrote them on popsicle sticks, and was drawing sticks to choose partners. My friend and I are on the edge of our seats and the teacher draws my number then pulls out another stick and it's my best friend's number. The teacher got mad at us celebrating and said that she's redrawing all of the sticks, only to draw us at partners again. We lose our shit, high-fiving and hugging and yelling. The teacher got super mad, gave up and let everyone pick their partners. When I was in 6th grade I didn't study or care about classes whatsoever. One day I had a 20 question true slash false history test. I decided to wing it and somehow managed to get a perfect zero. Like how the hell do you get a perfect zero from guessing on a 20 question true or false test? I don't really talk about this much because it's one of those things that nobody will believe. My brother got kidnapped in Mexico in 05 while I was on vacation with him. He's fine. That's a longer story. While he was being taken away and I was hysterical, arguing with the kidnappers in a language that I could barely speak, a seal jumped up out of the water next to the dock, about 3 feet from us, with a huge bloody fish in its jaws, and a pelican swooped down and fought him for it. It was crazy and awe inspiring. Both the kidnappers and I stopped arguing and just stared at this whole thing going down with our jaws agape. The seal won and sunk below the clear blue water with its prize, leaving a trail of crimson in the water as it swam away. We looked at each other and said, ho, and then started fighting for my brother again. My grandfather always tells this story of how when my mother and her brothers were young, he had planned for them all to go on a family holiday to the beach, including my grandmother. They told the kids about it, and, because they weren't doing so well financially, they had incorporated it into Christmas, because Santa hadn't brought much. Mum and her brothers were also excited to go to the beach. As the holiday got closer, even though my pop had been working overtime for months as had my nan, it was clear they weren't going to have enough money. They decided they couldn't do that to the kids, so after consideration, they decided to just go to leave their house repayments and multiple bills unpaid and take what they could. While they were on holidays they went to the beach. When my pop got out of the water first, he put his clothes on and waited for the others. It wasn't until they got home he realized he had put someone else's shorts on. He went back down to the beach to find the owner and to get his own pants back because he had a small amount of money in the pockets. 
Of course, the owner was nowhere to be seen. It was at this time, that he checked the pockets of the shorts he had on, to see if there was any id. There wasn't, but there was a scrunched up tab ticket, for a horse named Mystic Mary. He found that odd, because my grandmother's name is Mary. So on his way down to the shops, that night to buy fish and chips for dinner, he stopped at the pub to have a quick beer, and remembered the ticket. He says to this day he doesn't know why he didn't just throw it away, but he decided to check and see if it had won. It had. And he had won. Two thousand dollars. Zero zero. More than enough to cover their holiday and pay the bills and do some extra activities with the kids as well. He said he has never again had luck like that. It's his favorite story. Still to this day, every time he tells it, you can tell that he still can't quite believe it. He always says, and to think, that I was worried, that I had lost 5 bucks, when I lost my own shorts. TL. Doctor grandparents take their kids on a holiday, even when they can't afford it. Pop puts on wrong pants and finds a ticket to a winning horse. 4th grade playground. A friend asked me to call heads or tails on a coin toss. I said neither. It's going to land sideways on its edge. It did, while landing in a crack in the pavement. I turned and walked away quietly with everyone's jaws agape. 30 years later, it's still one of the highlights of my life. I have a friend, who is so bad at throwing things we say he has a gypsy curse on him. I've seen him try to dunk trash, while standing next to a trash can and miss. I've never seen him throw anything, and come anywhere near hitting his intended target. He can't shoot hoops, nothing. Except one time, we were at a strip club, and the stripper sticks a shot glass into her asshole, and is taunting us to throw money into the glass. If you get it and you get a free dance in VIP. We're all throwing crumpled up bills at her asshole trying to get the free lap dance. Then my friend casually walks up, assess the situation, crumples a five, starts taking a drink from his beer, and while his head is tilted back, and eyes are closed makes the shot, and it goes right in. He was more excited he made the shot, then he was for the lap dance. TL. Doctor my friend threw a crumpled up 5 into a chick's asshole from 15 feet. When we were younger, my brother and I were chipping golf balls up and down a football pitch to practice a little, and also out of boredom. About 10 meters away from the goal, my brother hit the ball, it bounced off the crossbar, and came back to hit him square in the forehead. I was about 12 to 13 at the time and even then I knew the chance of hitting a spherical object off quite a small cylindrical object, and bouncing back at that exact angle to hit him in the head, was very very low. Once it happened I fell over laughing, then looked up to see his face and hands covered in blood. We found the golf ball later with a lump of his forehead on it, slash. This one happened this last weekend. I had gone to the Portland Comic Con, just to get Bruce Campbell's autograph as he has been my hero, since Army of Darkness days. Well I didn't get in line soon enough, and I was not able to get it. I was pretty bummed, so I figured I would take angry poop. As I'm doing my number 2 business I hear two people walk in. One says to the other okay, stand here and wait in front of this stall, make sure nobody uses, it'll go grab him, and lead him here. At this point in thinking who could possibly be so important, that they are reserving a stool for him. I figure what the hell, it'll hang out for a little, while longer and figure out who it is. When the person shows up, and thanks the guy holding the stool for him, I know immediately, that it is Bruce. So I got to poo in the stool next to my childhood hero after not being to meet him. TL. Doctor, I'm now pooples with Bruce Campbell. I was getting change back from the cashier at the cafeteria back in high school. She slapped down two quarters on the counter, and I shit you not, one was standing up perfectly still on top of the other. This will never happen again, no matter how hard I try. Borders shit, when I was 12 or 13, was practicing hitting golf balls with a golf club out of boredom. Decided I was done, but wanted to see how accurately I could hit the ball. Looked at the swing set nearby, thought hey I wonder the odds are that I could hit that crossbar over the slide. Swung the club, never have I had such clean contact. Watched the ball rocket forward hit the bar dead on then saw it coming back. Before I could react it hit me between the eyes right on the bridge of my nose. What are the fucking odds I thought as I rolled on the ground in pain. 
I was playing the Wheel of Fortune on a casino riverboat. As the last bet of the night, I placed my last $5 chip out of 100 bucks I started with on the 20 to 1 shot, figuring it would keep me from having to stand in line to get 5 bucks while all my friends were waiting on me. Spin. The wheel gets stuck between my number and the number next to it. The lady calls the pit boss over and is about to say it's on the 20 when he notices my bet on the table. Spin it again, he says, looking me right in the eye. Bet stares they are. So I'm forced to leave my bet on the 20 to 1 shot again, while she spins the wheel. Click click click. 20 to 1 pays out. No question about it this time. I walk out with all my money back, and a smile on my face. My husband and I met online, but it turns out we were destined for each other. My grandmother had worked for his grandfather. Our fathers have been friends in college and his aunt had lived across the road from my parents when I was little. We only found this all out days before the wedding. Before we met, my wife, from Portland, or, was backpacking in Europe. In Greece she met a girl from Ireland, who had gone to college in Boston. The Irish girl commented that my wife's mannerisms and voice reminded her of a girl, Karen, she knew from Boston. Turned out it was the same Karen that had been my wife's best friend when she lived in Portland too. Okay, I see this is more confusing than it needed to be. Another try, Liz from Portland, my wife, was in Greece. She met a girl from Ireland, let's call her Fina. Fina said Liz's mannerisms and voice reminded her of her another girl, Karen, that Fina knew from college in Boston. The same Karen from Boston had actually gone to high school in Portland and was Liz's best friend. HMM. Rereading. Maybe I'm just not good at this. I was driving down the highway. There are very few cars on the road. Mine, and two others, that I can remember. Mr. Skirrell makes a terrible life-changing decision. Skirrell is pretty far in front of me. It gets hit by one of the only two other cars I see on the road and skips across. By the grace of the seven Skirrell gods, it was okay. It took off in the other direction toward safety, immediately regretting, one would assume, its decision to cross the road in the first place. When an eagle, yes, a fucking eagle, swoops down out of nowhere and snags the little bastard. The eagle grabbed Mr. Skirrell and did a low altitude flyover of the highway with it just to bust its balls. It skimmed the ground right in front of me and I was inches from running it over. When the second car present with me on the highway immediately to my left, which was a high and tibia and not sure why I remember that, takes them both out. Mercifully I saw neither move again in my mirror, after kissing the grill at 75 miles per hour, that's 120 kilometers per hour for you peens and nucks. The whole thing probably took 3 seconds, but it was 3 seconds of awesome. I was living in San Antonio a few years back for school and a friend of mine that I met in college station had moved to New Braunfels to be a mortician. I was out at lunch with a separate group of friends at a deli, and a guy approached me who was making balloon animals, or whatever for some party company. They did all kinds of things for parties like rentals for popcorn machines or moon jumpers, clowns, party accessories like tablecloths, etc. He was really nice, and he gave me his business card. Anyway, flash forward to about a month later, and my friend from NB called me up kind of upset. We met up at Olive Garden and started talking. She had embalmed this guy who had written all over his body in permanent marker who his best friends were, and his family, and quotes he thought were memorable, etc and she was upset, because by law she wasn't allowed to tell anybody about the marker and stuff. She didn't even think the police really saw all of it. He had died of a self-inflicted gunshot wound to the chest and the weird thing to me was how meticulously planned out he had done it all. He made sure all his debts were paid and rented a hotel and wrote notes to everyone and calmly called his family and friends on the phone to say goodbye. When I went to pay, I had the guy from the Della's business card in my wallet and she saw it and exclaimed, that's the guy. The chances are probably pretty astronomical that I ran into a random dude in a deli in a city of one. 3 million and my friend in another city, embalmed the same guy and we both know each other and etc etc. The whole situation still boggles my mind. Went to museum with my parents and my kids. While eating lunch, my mom notices she is missing her diamond bracelet. 
we look all through the bags and call the hotel where they stayed the night before on their drive to visit us and decide to head back to the house. While walking to the car, I happened to be looking on the ground for some more examples of artistic robot graffiti that someone had done in the neighborhood that I had seen and noticed what appeared to be a piece of costume jewel re-smooshed into the mud in a crack in the sidewalk. It looked like it had been there a long time. I picked it up and jokingly said hey mom, found your bracelet. Only, it actually was. What are the chances?